Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be continuing on um, two themes from um, Wednesday's demo which I'll link to below if you haven't seen it. It's looking at painter's block and how to get over it but also looking at painting abstracts with the card swipe method um, which is what we call on Patreon the method of applying paint wet in wet to the paper by using um, freshly squeezed paint from the tube which is applied to a flexible piece of card like a store card and take a look at Morgana's demos um, she's done one and is going to be doing more similar where she uses a palette knife to apply paint wet in wet in the same sort of way so that's what I'll be doing today but this demo um, the painting of it only takes about less than five minutes to create this beautiful painting here it might take a few goes um, to get used to the technique, but once you get used to painting in this kind of way and start to be able to sort of tame the way the paint moves and flows on the page as you move the paint around and tip and tilt the board, um, I think you'll find it a very satisfying way to paint and you will produce something unique every time you try it. So getting back to the theme of painter's block, um, I think we all get that from time to time. Um, we really want to paint, we've got no idea what to paint, or we've been away from painting for a few days and it's really difficult to know how to start again. It almost feels like we've never painted again. So something like this, where you take the pressure off yourself and just let yourself go and just allow yourself to fail a few times, um, but just to enjoy the process of actually painting and experimenting and watching the way the paint, the water and gravity flow together on the page and just to see how you can exploit opportunities in order to create something interesting. Um, and at this, in this case, uh, this very quick, simple, abstract landscape. So again, with an experiment like this, I'm using the back of an old painting, so it saves on money. And um, in this case, it's Saunders Waterford cold press paper. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape. And my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees, so the paint will run and flow. And I can pick it up and tip and tilt it. I'm going to wet the, the uh, sky area all over with a large wash brush. This is a Dela Rowney Aquafine Skyflow brush, a three inch one, and um, then wet the foreground, um, leaving a few dry patches so I get some hard edges. Um, this is my card and I've squeezed out lots of fresh paint. It's student quality Cotman paint. So just use your cheap paint for this um, so that you don't mind using plenty of it and then you'll get lovely vibrant results. Now I'm just going to scrape the paint across the page, um, sort of at a rough horizon line. You can see how I'm thinking as I scrape the paint, not worrying about what happens too much. Apart from that, I'm trying to make it look like a distant headland or something like that. Um, so I'm sort of moving the paint around a little bit with the card, using the edge and the flat of the card at different times for different marks. This is where you need to experiment a bit just to find out what you can actually do with the paint. So you can see already there's some really interesting marks starting to happen. So the next phase is to kind of refine what went down on the page to start with. If you're trying this at home, don't worry if it turns out completely different. The idea is to seize the opportunities that you see on the page, the marks that the paint has given you, and then try and turn those into something. Or just have fun, and if it all goes wrong, then get out the back of another piece of another old painting and try again. So then I will use uh, my brushes to then soften edges and pull down some of the paint um, because my board's at an angle, so if I wet the page more with my brushes, then the paint will begin to flow. And now, while the sky area is still damp, I'm going to introduce plenty of my cerulean blue. Um, so using um, a wash brush, I've dipped into the cerulean blue that's left on the card. There's still plenty of it there. And I am now like, brushing it in sort of horizontal brush strokes until I get a nice smooth wash and then brushing some across 
the foreground and the midground um, as well to sort of balance things up a bit. I'm avoiding brushing across the headland because I don't want um, the wet sky wash to meet the wet headland otherwise that will start to run and might sort of spoil the effect. So I'm leaving it quite pale, almost unpainted paper, which causes um, the headland to stand out really beautifully as if it's backlit by the sun. And now using a mottler brush and some flat brushes, I'm just dipping into various colours that are left on the card and introducing them into the damp foreground. Um, so I get that sort of something and nothing, but slightly more of it and more intense paint across the foreground just to sort of um, build an illusion. I'm seeing this now as a sort of a, a, a beach scene um, with a distant headland. So I'm go going to introduce some raw sienna across the beach and that should just warm things up a little bit and sort of create the illusion of some sand across there and to my mind that then makes everything else look a little bit more like the beach the water and the distant headland but the beauty of this sort of abstract spontaneous painting is that it could be whatever i want it to be but it can also be whatever the viewer sees in it. Um, it's just suggestive marks, but I'm just trying to keep the orientation of the marks in the sort of position so that it reads like a landscape, if you see what I mean. And that's about done, so I'm gonna leave it to dry completely. And here it is, it's all nice and dry, and I must admit, I like the way it's turned out. I think it makes quite a convincing landscape considering it's taken less than five minutes to paint um, all in all. Um, longer for the drying time of course but with this sort of thing I think often the less time you spend on an experiment like this uh, the fresher your outcome. So let's remove the tape um, pulling it away from the painting um, just in case it was to tear um, and then have a look at it with its white border and see how it looks. Seeing the white border kind of almost makes the painting look more finished um, so we don't see all the sort of scruffy outside edge and if we look at it um, freshly on a fresh sort of clean board it's easier for us to see how it's looking and with something like this you could add figures on the beach but I quite like the desolate um, sort of wilderness feel of this beach scene, this abstract landscape. Um, and I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. I've really enjoyed these paintings and I'm feeling a lot less blocked and quite excited to continue experimenting and then to get my sketchbook out and to start working on some more planned paintings, but ones that will incorporate some of the spontaneity and freshness in this sort of landscape. So if we zoom in um, and let's take a sort of closer look at some of the marks that were created using um, the card swipe method. And if we look closer, some of the marks in the headland um, where the paint is sort of layered up and diffused in places and stayed soft and hard in others. Um, I think we've almost got the look of an oil painting to a certain extent and I think that's one of the lovely things about this method of painting. With oil painting, uh, paint is applied more thickly in layers and with palette knives or sort of very flat brushes and I think this effect actually almost sort of simulates that to a certain extent, but while still um, keeping the freshness and the transparency um, that's unique to watercolour. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you'll give something like this a go. I mean, use any colours that you want. That's the wonderful thing about this. Um, and bear in mind that every time you try this, it, it'll be different. And that's a good thing. Um, it's really important to learn to express yourself in your own unique way when you paint. And exercises like this allow you to explore your cre creativity in a very unique way. You can find out which colours really sing to you. And if you've been feeling um, like you have painter's block or don't know which direction to go to, 
spending a while playing around and experimenting in this sort of style and others can be the perfect way to sort of unblock yourself and to become inspired uh, because you'll suddenly start getting ideas again and that's exactly what you want when you're learning to paint is to be inspired and to get ideas that excite you and things that you want to really areas that you really want to explore so thank you so much for watching um, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and thank you so much to my wonderful patreon group who support this channel and i'll see you again soon and happy painting bye